Welcome to Digits, I'm Simon Constable. You certainly are connected to the internet, but soon will all your gadgets be as well? The Internet of Things is said to be coming soon. What is it and what does it mean for the future of gadgets? Zonoff CEO Mike Harris is here to explain it all. Thank you for being here, your debut on Digits. Thanks for having me. The Internet of Things, what, what is that? It's a great, it's a great phrase. I wish <laughs> I thought of it, but I didn't. So what does it mean? Well, it's really some, as simple as uh, connecting, you know, everyday devices, objects to the internet. You know, whether it's in, in, you know, farm equipment or, you know, even something like industrial equipment, copiers in the office, or, you know, devices inside the home. Like Now, the projections out five years or six years or seven years are truly amazing to the site, the number of devices that we're going to have connected is quite staggering. It's in the, it's in the tens of billions. It, it's huge. You know, Cisco just, you know, spun off a new group, talked about a $14.4 trillion market, you know, for Internet of Things. So just staggering numbers when you talk about all the devices being connected. So some of them I can, I can sort of see, you know, connecting your phone to your TV so you can use it as a remote. That works. But what about connecting the toaster? Do you really need Granny's toaster? connected to the web. I mean, it seems a bit ridiculous. Well, there's, you know, some devices that might be, you know, a bit of a stretch, but there are tons of everyday things that can be connected and really bring value. I mean, whether it's a sprinkler system that doesn't run because it knows that, you know, that rain is expected later in the day or on a sunny day, automatically close the blinds. I, I do like that. That's got it's a touching faith in the weather forecast. <laughs> um, and I'm from a country where the weather forecast is rarely right, but we don't have to worry about rain. So where do you, where do you see this going? I mean, do you see this just becoming like a you know a Ray Bradbury novel when it, where we've got sort of everything? Well, that's you know that's really where it's going. You know, just like with smartphones, now that's become ubiquitous. Where you know everyday people carrying with them mm. all the time. Now you know everyday objects being connected all the time as well, and being smart because they're talking to each other. Now, I know that when we had um, Superstorm Sandy, uh, a lot of people living in low Manhattan were without power and there weren't cell towers and stuff available, so they weren't connected and they found it very frustrating. Do you see that as a problem that when it doesn't, when it works, it's fine, it's great, great. But suddenly when it doesn't work, we find ourselves unconnected and that's even more frustrating and than if we had never had it. Yeah, you, you start to expect it. You know, it becomes a, you know, regular behavior when you walk in a room and the lights come on automa automatically. You know, you open the garage door at night and, you know, your house welcomes you home. But now you have to go back to using your key, you know, to open the door. You need to, you know, uh, you know, live like you used to when you get used to these, you know, behaviors and these benefits. Now, one of the other things about this is, is what is the business model behind it? And we've seen a lot of people wrestling with that for the, to the general web. But as we get more and more things connected, like the, the lights turning on automatically and things like that, how do you get that as a service that's affordable that people want to pay for? Well, there's a, a lot of companies involved, whether it's the device manufacturers themselves that have, you know, the obvious benefit of bringing connected new mm -hmm. devices to the market. Um, but it even involves service providers, cable, satellite companies that are trying to add additional services for consumers or, you know, even retailers that now want to, you know, make the different disparate products in their stores talk to each other. Okay. One thing that does worry me, one of the things we got on our devices now is get a lot of ads that pop up and they're unique to you often or, or, or tailored to the individual. Is that going to happen in our home and be really irritating? You know, you go to the microwave if you've got one and, and then suddenly there's an ad on there for something? Well, I think there's a lot of different business models mm. that work and, and ultimately consumers have to be able to opt out and, and preserve their privacy should they want to. But, you know, there will be, you know, new business models where people can go and you know finance you know this technology through advertising. So, in your home, what uh, what do you want to have connected? Oh, I you know uh, I'm a, one of those cases where I have tons of things connected. Everything from all my entry access, like door locks and garage doors, to you know window coverings, you know light switches, 
thermostats, you know, sensors all do, over. Do you worry about things going? I mean, I'm 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 a brutal. I like the analog things, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really do. You know, it put you hammer things into the wall, make them stick. You know, locks that that turn with a key. Don't you worry that you'll have an outage, an electricity outage, and suddenly you'll be locked into your home, won't be able to go out, or, or worse, you know, it's really cold outside and you're locked out. Well, everything has, you know, the backup where it still works without power. It still works, you know, fundamentally mm. like it used to. But, you know, it's it's much like the, the car today with, you know, drive-by-wire technology where all of that has become so, you know, uh, advanced from a technology perspective where the car just won't work without it. How do you want Zonoff to to prosper in this revolution? Because that's what it sounds like it is to me. How, how do you want to be participating, you and your company? So really what we do is we're a behind the scenes technology supplier. Mm. So we power platforms from service providers, big retailers, device manufacturers. Really, you know, almost an Intel inside model where we help them bring these products to market. So you, you're sort of the engine that makes them work, like the magic inside. Yeah, the software that's that's out in the cloud and, and running inside these devices. So basically it doesn't matter who succeeds as long as they're using your stuff and you, you're fine with that. That's the sort of the Intel idea, right? Again. That, that's the model. That's the model. Well, we hope you've become fabulously successful. Mike Harris of right. Zonoff, we appreciate your time. I'm Simon Constable, and that was Digits.